Yo, what is up guys? Delboy here, aka Blue Collar Sports TV. Hopefully you guys are doing well. If you are new here, smash that like, hit subscribe, all of that good stuff. This video is just a quick preview and prediction for Lawrence Okole versus Christoph Glowacki. This fight goes down on the 20th of March, this weekend on Saturday. It goes down at Wembley Arena in the UK in London. And this fight will be televised on Sky Sports in the UK and The Zone in the USA. And this fight is actually for the vacant WBO cruiserweight title. Interesting fight here. I'm actually looking forward to this one. I know Lawrence Okole isn't exactly the most fan-friendly fighter in the world. In fact, some of his fights have been downright ugly, but I am looking forward to this one because ultimately this is the biggest test of Lawrence Okole's career. Uh, Christoph Glowacki, a former world champion, very experienced, crafty, he can punch a bit. It's definitely a big step up for Lawrence Okole, and I'm intrigued to see how he handles the occasion. Is he the real deal? Can he get the job done? Or will he be exposed in this fight and lose? It's going to be interesting. I quite like this fight, to be honest. But, um, yeah, let's briefly run through the tail of the tape. And then we'll go into the actual fight itself. I'll try and break it down and make my official prediction. But, yeah, let's get into it. We shall start with the tail of the tape. Lawrence Okole has a perfect record of 15-0. 12 of those 15 wins coming by way of knockout. Christoph Glowacki has a record of 31 wins, 2 defeats, 0 draws. 19 of those 31 wins coming by way of knockout. Lawrence Okole is listed as 6 foot 5 with an 82 and a half inch reach, whereas Christoph Glowacki is listed as 6 foot with a 75 inch reach. So a massive size advantage for Lawrence Okole. Let's be honest, Lawrence Okole eventually will be a heavyweight. He's a massive cruiserweight and he's got a 5 inch height advantage and also a 7.5 inch reach advantage. And given the type of fighter Lawrence Okole is, given what tactics he does use in certain fights, those physical advantages could be a massive factor in this fight. Not only is he taller and longer, but all in all he carries more weight as well. He's just the bigger man in there when you look at these two. So yeah, Okole has a huge size advantage going into this fight and that is a big factor in my opinion um but yeah Lawrence Okole is an orthodox fighter whereas Christoph Glowacki is southpaw Lawrence Okole is 28 years old whereas Christoph Glowacki is 34 years old so Glowacki certainly has the experience factor he's the older man he's had more pro fights he's fought a higher level of competition when you look at Glowacki's resume, he's fought guys like Maxim Vlasov, Meris Briedis, Marco Hook, Steve Cunningham, Alexander Yusek. He has been in there with the best, so he's certainly more experienced going into this fight. But on the flip side, Lawrence Okole is the fresher man, uh, not being through the wars that Glowacki has. So how much of a factor experience will be in this fight? It could get outweighed by the, young, the youngness and freshness of Lawrence Okole. But that is the tail of the tape out of the way. Now let's actually talk about this fight itself. I guess I shall start with the underdog, Christoph Glowacki. Now going into this fight, he really is up against it. He's up against the younger, fresher man, away from home. Lawrence Okole is so much bigger, so much longer, so much heavier, so much stronger. And on top of that, Lawrence Okole's tactics that he's used so far in his career are extremely hard to negate especially when the referee is not really doing anything about it. So, Glowacki certainly has his work cut out in this fight. Christoph Glowacki is a relatively crafty fighter, to his credit. He's a southpaw, and he can be somewhat awkward. I think he needs to rely on those traits in this fight uh, tenfold, quite frankly. Um, you know, Lawrence Okole is a guy who obviously likes to utilise that clinch game very much in his fights, Christoph Glowacki, obviously a southpaw, he's got a really nice uh, southpaw left-hand uppercut, which is a pretty good shot from him. That's one shot in this fight that I believe Christoph Glowacki needs to be looking out for, um, particularly when Lawrence Okole falls in for the clinch. If I was Glowacki, I would, I would be practicing that shot in training camp. Um, Lawrence Okole, he's a guy who is kind of awkward at times, a little bit raw, a little bit wild, and a lot of the time, he'll kind of wildly throw a punch and he'll kind of miss the target, then he'll fall in as his form of defence. So, 
you know, when Lawrence Okole is throwing that right hand, I think Glowacki needs to be ready to come back with that uh, left uppercut. He needs to be evading the left, uh, the, the straight right of, of Lawrence Okole. And then when Lawrence Okole falls in, then look for that left uppercut while Okole is falling in. I think that could be a sneaky little shot which could uh, catch Lawrence Okole. You know, every single fight I've seen Lawrence Okole in, when he's kind of stepped up, he has always kind of fell in in certain moments in fights when he's missed his right hand in particular. So Glowacki certainly needs to watch out for that and he needs to prepare with that left the left uppercut, in my opinion. Also in this fight, uh, uh, Christoph Glowacki is going to have to prepare and cope with Lawrence Okole's strength and his clinch game. Hopefully this, this guy's been lifting the weights in training camp because he needs to be super strong and he needs to be able to get a hand free so he can work. Okole, in a lot of fights, like the Matty Askin fight, for example, he would completely tie up Matty Askins. He would tie up both of his arms so he couldn't work and then basically he would lean all over him, wrestle him and drain his gas tank. Lawrence Okole doesn't work himself in the clinch all that much. He kind of just neutralizes you and uses his weight and strength to tire you out. So in this fight, Glowacki needs to try and get a hand free as much as he as much as he can, so he can work on the inside and you know chip away, land those little body shots, etc. Uh, he needs to try and be active in the clinch because we've not really seen anybody do that against Lawrence Okole, mainly down to sheer strength and size quite frankly but Okole needs to try and buck that trend. Okole is quite strong, he is quite you know a physically strong dude so hopefully he can try and get a hand free in this fight in the clinch and actually try and get some work done and also in this fight Glowacki needs to implement that head movement. Glowacki can actually move his head quite well uh, to be fair to him so in this fight while he's on the outside I think he needs to be changing levels, moving his head Try and draw the lead of Lawrence Okole, the right hand, or even the jab, whatever it may be. Make Lawrence miss, and then come back up and, and kind of rush Lawrence Okole with his hook, with his right hook. Uh, Glowacki does have a nice right hook, and he can actually jump in with it, or rush in with it. Uh, Glowacki, when he kind of jumps in, is quite quick. So, yeah, try and, try and remain on the outside. Make Okole... Uh, commit to a shot on the outside, try and slip it, try and evade it, and then come in with a quick hook uh, kind of thing. Try and try and catch Okole by surprise. And ultimately, I think it's important in this fight that Glowacki does maybe buzz Lawrence Okole. Because if this guy doesn't respect Glowacki and, you know, he doesn't feel the power or feel the strength or whatever, Lawrence Okole is just going to have his way with um, with Christoph Glowacki. So Glowacki needs to make Okole feel something that he's not felt before. That could be strength, power, whatever it may be. I think he needs to catch Okole with a big shot in this fight and make him realise, you know, that he is a threat. Because like I say, if, if Okole does not respect Glowacki, it's going to be a long night for Glowacki, in my opinion. And um, another thing as well, in, in any moment that it, that it presents itself, I think Glowacki needs to work that body as well. Glowacki's got some nice hooks to the body. Uh, he is a good body puncher. Also got some nice uppercuts to the body. That's another shot in the clinch that um, Glowacki can actually look for, is the uppercut to the body. Yeah, try not to neglect the body. Um, if, I, if I was Christoph Glowacki, sorry, I'd be working the body of Akole. He's tall, he's long. There's a lot of body to aim at. And um, try and drain some of that strength and some of that power from Akole. Ultimately, I think it's a very hard fight for Glowacki, but, you know, those are some aspects in which I think he can have success in, or those are at least areas in which I'd be looking at, you know? But anyway, moving on to Lawrence Okole. As for Lawrence Okole, he's obviously recently uh, teamed up with Shane McGuigan. I believe he's had two or three fights with Shane, and what I have noticed in that little partnership, that, that short time, Lawrence Okole has actually got a bit better at maintaining range, and keeping guys at the end of his jab, and keeping all, and also keeping guys at the end of his straight right hand. He would connect at the end of a punch, rather than smothering himself, falling short, etc. Don't get me wrong, he was still doing it a lot in his first few fights under Shane McGuigan, but I, I, I've seen signs that it slowly started to get ironed out of his game, and I want to see more of that in this fight. I want to see Lawrence Okole keep Glowacki at the end of that long, powerful jab, you know? Take that half step back, keep on taking the half step back, keep on pumping out the jab, and keep Glowacki at arm's length without having to resort to clinching. And, you know, maintain the range, keep Glowacki at arm's length, 
and then look for that straight right hand. Of course, you know, Golowaki is a southpaw, and as they say, the straight right hand is the best way to find a southpaw at times. Golowaki's guard is kind of wide, he kind of lowers uh, his hands a little bit too much. And, you know, that straight right hand could definitely be there for Lawrence Sokole. He just needs to keep his, his distance control correct, uh, maintain range, and that right hand could definitely be there against Christoph Glowacki. So I do want to see Lawrence box from the outside in this fight on a more regular basis. Like I say, try not to resort to falling into the clinch all of the time. Number one, it is ugly as hell, and it is illegal, let's be honest. But also, who knows? You could actually find yourself in harm's way eventually if you keep on relying on that. If you're fighting a crafty veteran who can shorten his punches and time you, you can actually time somebody coming into the clinch, believe it or not. And maybe Glowacki is the type of crafty guy who can do that. So, listen, I want to see uh, Lawrence Okole keep this fight on the outside for greater periods of time. Of course, Okole has that clinch game to fall back on if he needs it, if he gets hurt, etc. Fair enough, clinch, but don't rely on that being a primary tactic of neutralising your opponents. Lawrence has great physical attributes. Tall, his reach... He's got really good punching power. I want to see him utilise that in greater effect in this fight. And I want to see more variety on the jab as well. I want to see Okole go from body to head with it. I, I, again, I've seen more of that under Shane McGuigan. You know, stab uh, Glowacki to the chest with that jab. Keep on stabbing him to the chest. That's a great way to domesticate a come-forward fighter. Glowacki is naturally quite aggressive. I would imagine he'll try and force this fight, especially early on. You know, don't, don't just aim the jab for the head. You know, change levels of it. Try and jab to the chest of Glowacki, the stomach of Glowacki. If you consistently jab somebody's chest and stomach, you can actually take the air right out of them, as we saw uh, in the Sergei Kovalev Anthony Yard fight. That was a case of Yard being knocked out by a thousand jabs. People say Yard got knocked out by one jab. No, he got stuck. He got stopped by hundreds of jabs. That's what happened there. You know, his gas tank was drained from the body jabs till he couldn't take any more. And again, I want to see a Kole try and vary the jabs, go from body to head, etc. You know, try and, you know, just, just add some new subtleties to that jab. When a Kole throws it from the, uh, from the right range, it is a very good jab. He's just inconsistent with it. He just needs to get a bit more consistency on the jab with a bit more variety, and that will be a very dangerous weapon for uh, for Lawrence Okole. Also in this fight, I want to see a Kole actually try and utilise some of those shorter punches. I've seen Lawrence Okole deliver some real nice uppercuts up close and, and some shorter punches. Again, in this fight, I want to see Lawrence try and utilise those instead of clinching all the time, try and uh, surprise Glowacki coming in uh, with an uppercut or, or or something of that nature. Glowacki, when he comes forward, he does, he does move his head at times, but at times also he comes in kind of... Um, not square on, but he'll kind of come in with his head over centre line. And sometimes he will neglect that head movement. Like I say, he'll come in, not necessarily square on, but sometimes he does come in with his head leaning over his lead leg, if that makes sense. And that opportunity would be perfect for Lawrence Okole to find the uppercut. And even if he comes in like that with a high guard, the thing is with Glowacki, sometimes the way he holds his guards, his elbows are kind of wide apart. So it's not like tight, to, they're not tight together, they're wide apart. And again, that's perfect for the uppercut to penetrate. So listen, I want to see Lawrence Okole try and mix it up in this fight as well. Surprise us, surprise Glowacki. The uppercut against Glowacki is certainly going to be there. So listen, there's, there's some things I want, uh, want Okole to do in this fight. I want to see him fight a more clean fight behind the jab, utilize the distance, take a step back, keep Glowacki at range and try and be the boxer puncher. Listen, I get that Okole is always going to be a bit raw, etc. That's that, that is what it is. I just want to see him fight a bit cleaner in this fight. But um yeah, obviously you've got those physical advantages, so at times why not use them? I'm, I'm sure he will do and in certain circumstances he'll need to, but yeah, I want to see Lawrence box a little bit more in this fight. But um yeah, my official prediction in this fight now the little breakdowns out of the way. Listen, I can't look past Lawrence Okole in this fight. I, I really can't. I do rate Christoph Glowacki highly. But the size difference in this fight is a big factor, and also the fact that Glowacki has been through uh, through wars. I think he's seen better days. I think this fight, to me, looks like a Lawrence Okole win. Whether it's by stoppage or or points, I'm not entirely sure. But I'm going with a Lawrence Okole win. I'll say late stoppage. I'll say late stoppage. But there we go. I've got Lawrence Okole in this fight. What about you guys? Share your thoughts below. Tell me how you feel. Who are you picking and why? Peace.